Carlsbad, people, purpose, and impact, an essential podcast for those who live, work, visit, and play in Carlsbad. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Brett Schonsenbach. I am the president and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. I am your host today and I'm super excited to have with me, we have two people today. We have a dynamic duo of Lisa Rodman, the CEO at the Agua Hedionda Lagoon Foundation and Samantha Richter, the COO at the Agua Hedionda Lagoon Foundation. Thanks for being here, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, look. <laughs> we said it at the same time. Yeah, in stereo. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Good to have you. So um, in doing some, you know, background digging, you know, not looking for dirt, not that kind of digging, but still. You do dirt I, down yeah, the- <laughs> yeah, you guys do dirt really well. But um, I, Lisa, I think you might be the only person I actually know personally who came from the great state of Delaware. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I had no idea that was, uh, in, so you were born and raised there type of deal or what's the story? I was born in Elkton, but I know only about Delaware until I moved out here to California. So no recollection of Elkton, Maryland at all. Uh, I grew up in Newark, Delaware, and then moved my formative years down to Dover, and then up to the U of D for college. So nice, very nice. And so from there to here, though, so you, nothing in between. So Delaware and California, that's it. Two- that was it. I got in my orange Vega with a dog and a friend, and was a modern day pioneer coming across to- <laughs> all, <laughs> all the, all the way states. across. <laughs> Made it here. And Samantha, you and I, we share we share a little bit there. So um, both hail from the major metropolis of Vista and Vista High grads, go Panthers. Uh, Rancho Buena Vista High. Oh, for I'm me. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you That's can okay. take that one away. <laughs> I was, um, I was uh, when I graduated, RBV hadn't, oh, it was one year away from opening. So uh, sometimes I forget about that part. No, but my mom was founding faculty at RBV. So wow. we still share that. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Cool. Very cool. So good to have you guys here. So Lisa, You've been at Agua Hedionda since 2010, right? June 24th. No, to be specific. Uh, but the foundation was started back in 1990. So tell us, both of you, tell us a little bit about the foundation, what it does, and how awesome it is, etc. Well, it's the awesome-ist in Carlsbad. <laughs> <laughs> 1990 passionate people of Carlsbad decided that they were worried about the lagoon and people being able to interact with it because of all the development that was going on. Mm -hmm. So they got together and decided that they would create this foundation to have this responsible use and balanced and access to the lagoon. So that was kind of their original charter. And their real mission was probably two pages long. So one of the first things that I was privileged to do is shorten it to a message that I'll let Samantha share with you because it's super succinct. (laughs) The mission is to inspire people through education and outreach to preserve the lagoon as a healthy and accessible watershed. So that healthy and accessible really has stayed the same since 1990 when we originally looked at those paragraphs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I like the word you said, accessible. Because that is unique. I mean, we have some other lagoons here in our community, but the accessibility of yours is uh, is a little bit, um, you know, it sets it apart. It's different. It makes it different. It's unique because as we educate up at the Nature Center, we use hands-on mm-hmm. because we use our lagoon versus our neighbors to the right and the left mm-hmm. view their lagoon. So mm-hmm. that is our unique asset. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of different entities on the lagoon as well right. compared to Vatiquitos, Buena Vista, San Alejo. So it's multi-use. Yeah, mm-hmm. multi-use. And so, but you guys also, um, we'll talk about the Discovery Center in a minute for sure because that's amazing. But but you guys are also involved in the trail maintenance and... And the, building the trails. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. Well, it is quite the journey. Yeah. When I sit on the patio of the nature center and I look to the west I wish I had a trail it's one of my bigger disappointments Mm -hmm. of my time there at the discovery center because I would like to see trails from the discovery center down to the ocean Mm -hmm. and 
we cobble them together and we get easements when people uh, turn over property on the north side of the lagoon, but we don't have access to getting down to the ocean at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another frustration that we have is that we get an easement. The Coastal Commission is wonderful about letting us know when they're available. However, the city has to put a trail in the plan in order for us to build it. So there's kind of this catch-22. The the three miles that we're proud of, that we take care of, we do a, a stellar job at making sure that people have access and people aren't annoyed at that access. Don't you agree? <laughs> yeah. Yep. The people are not annoyed at that access. Well, you're passing in front of some people's homes at, at oh, between gotcha. $2 million and $5 million. So you want to do it respectfully. Re- responsible use. Yeah. That's what we're about. So you're you're navigating these waters between <laughs> um, these multi-million dollar homeowners and people who want to just walk the trails and enjoy nature out there. Yep. And uh, we continually maintain, groom, refurbish, cover up graffiti, especially on Hub's Trail. Graffiti. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> take out trash. And the refurbishment and maintenance side, you can't do during nesting season as well. So mm. you've got to... Um, that California gnat catcher is sacred down there. So there's a seasonality to maintenance and little projects and such. And right now we're having the king high tides. So one okay. of our trails is underwater. Yeah. So we'll get to go repair the sinkholes that happen when the water recedes. And this is ongoing throughout the year. Uh, I, don't I think know. it's like every three months it feels like. I don't know. I'm yeah, not... around the moons and then king king tides are typically winter. Okay. I, what an expert. <laughs> yeah, that's why. I love this girl. That's why you have her here. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's trails. I know you guys also are engaged in keeping the lagoon itself cleaned up and preserved and um, I know the last couple of years have had kind of a fun event. I mean, I'm sure you're engaged in it more than just the event, but the event is super fun. So I think you should talk about this event. Where are you on the leaderboard? That's what I want to know. And we had the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce got an award for the biggest weed we pulled out this year. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. I think it was uh, black mustard, if I recall yeah. correctly. Well, I'll trust you on that, but um, all I know is it was really big. <laughs> So we do a Laguna Kahuna team challenge, and we were challenged with COVID to adapt it and pivot like Mm, everybody else. We wanted to make sure that our lagoon got that rich cleaning up by all of the different companies that came out and sponsored teams and cleaned up trash and invasives and restoration. Mm -hmm. Did I get them all? Yeah. Okay. Then we get to do team building, and that happens in May. And we did that over a whole month last year Mm -hmm. so that everybody could safely participate. So you were down there on your own. But we used our leaderboard, and everybody knew where everybody stood. And at the end, we found that the Zoom meeting to do the award ceremony was quite effective. And it probably will always have some sort of component. But we really love and cherish that because it's part of our strategic plan is the cleaning up and interacting with the water that we right. have the joy of looking at every day yeah. at the Discovery Center. Yeah, yeah. Did I miss anything? No. Um, I was just going to say, in addition to Laguna Kahuna, you know, in conjunction and connection with those trails, we continually clean up yeah. along the shoreline. Um, in a big one, which if people listening remember last year, the red tide that came no. in and... Uh, killed quite a few fish and where did those fish end up on the shores of the lagoon and Uh. how did those homeowners feel so we came in um, with a lot of volunteers and community support and cleaned up all of the dead fish species that um, washed ashore and luckily that was like a once in 30 years red tide so we should be good for 30 years of that magnitude is Uh. that the same red tide as alabama no. Maybe uh, I don't roll, know. Roll but, tide. Uh, because roll I'm tide. just saying, uh-huh. she was a spectacular leader in that effort. Yeah. Uh, kudos to her. She really did make that all come together, and we made a lot of people happy. Yeah, and like as you mentioned, that was um, a more extreme version of that than um, is typically experienced. Yeah. So I'm sure the effort 
was monumental. It's to, a lot of a lot of dead fish. <laughs> yeah, man. And hopefully some of those homeowners came down and helped too. I hope. Yes, we've yes. made a lot yeah. of new connections. Yeah. And what's great, too, you know, we saw, obviously, a lot of dead fish on the shorelines. But if you go back down there today and go to Hub's Trail, you can see all the Garibaldi very happily swimming. So it doesn't look like the fish population was affected too terribly. (laughs) Good, good, good. All right. We've been talking to Lisa Rodman and Samantha Richter from the Agua Hedionda Lagoon Foundation. And we're going to take a brief pause to hear a message from our sponsor. And we'll be right back to talk about their Discovery Center. So let's talk now about your amazing Discovery Center. You mentioned already a little bit about how hands-on it is. Um, You guys have so much there. I'm not pointing out anything negative about other places, but usually when you go to places like this, there's a lot of things that are stuffed or, um, you know, have been replicated or whatever. But you guys have a lot of stuff that's alive. (laughs) I love it. Yes. And uh, it came with the sadness of Chlorpitaxifolia. So Chlorpitaxifolia was the killer algae that threatened to close our lagoon. Mm. Samantha's an expert on that, so I'd love her to give a little snippet of what that was. So in about 2000 to 2006, um, the year 2000, someone had dumped their aquarium down a storm drain near the lagoon, which had this seaweed Chlorpitaxifolia. It's a genetically engineered seaweed, which is great for aquariums. Doesn't require a lot of maintenance, grows really quick, bright green, you know, pretty for your at-home aquarium. Sure. Uh, it got into the lagoon and started to take over the native eel grass, which oh, is man. a big breeding ground for um, juvenile fish species. Mm-hmm. And luckily someone saw this strain of seaweed, like it's a lot brighter green than anything else. And uh, they recognize something was like it, out of place. Or exactly. That, that doesn't usually... And, uh, you know, today we've got signs up, right? And mm-hmm. you've got scientists that go and dive and check for it. But it was able to be caught in time. It only covered about 33% of the lagoon. Mm-hmm. So they were able to tarp by one foot by one foot um, chlorine down into the grounds wow. and kill it. It killed everything else in those sure. one-by-one tarps, including the native species. But because it was only 33% of the lagoon, uh, it was everything was able to come back. Right. And you think of it as if the eelgrass is gone, then the fish are gone, mm. then the bigger fish are gone, and then the birds that eat the fish are gone. And it would just be a Devastate. lagoon of taxifolia. And we were the fiscal agents of that $8 million almost project. I got to see the little checkbook. It wasn't even, you know, how you have the business checks and everything. It was like a personal checkbook. And because we were the fiscal agents, we were able to have a uh, percentage. And with that percentage, they built their master plan. That brings me back to your original why we have uh, the critters, the live critters, because people wanted to experience that uh, they wanted to showcase those sorts of experiences to kids so that they could hands-on touch nature now a lot of our reptiles that are handled are non-native because Mm -hmm. they're gentler Uh, but we teach pet responsibility through that and you get to have a little taste of nature and we showcase our natives that are a little feistier or more particular like the tarantula uh And they don't touch those. But kids love that first interaction. And I have to tell you, I don't know about Samantha, but for me, I light up when I see a little kid for the first time experiencing an animal. Yeah. Nature just right there in their hands. It's so cool. So cool. Very cool. So talk about some of the things that go on at the Discovery Center. I mean, on your website, there's preschool play dates, after school enrichment, camps. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Tell us a little bit about all those things. Well, I'm going to paint you a picture of what today looks like. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite busy down there. Uh, we start the day early today because we are getting a safety fence built for our 30 kids a day preschool play dates. So nice. we've got a little bit of construction down there in a good way. Uh, thanks to a very successful Giving Tuesday campaign. So if Excellent. any listeners contributed, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, 
then preschool play dates comes in. They start to drop off at 8.45 and there's 30 kids daily. We're hoping to get to 40 if we can find some more teachers. So newsflash, teacher job available. <laughs> quite a few. Uh, and then Pacific Rim Elementary comes for their Academy of Environmental Stewardship School program. And that program services uh, 13 districts surrounding Carlsbad. Uh, we're still trying to get those number up, numbers up post-COVID because there's still restrictions on 13 districts? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of and districts. And the Carlsbad Ed That's Foundation funds the Carlsbad Unified yeah. to come there. So Pacific awesome. Rim is there today. Awesome. As well yeah. as the as Navy. As well as the Navy, who are uh, <laughs> volunteering today mm -hmm. and taking care of some invasive species, cutting uh -huh. back some shrubbery that's overgrown, helping with our limonium event. So our parking lot is jam-packed. Nice. And then at about 2.30, we have our after-school enrichment kids, which is uh, an after-school program that was started during the pandemic as a way to get the kids off Zoom after school and has continued on um, with funding from Noitzen Corporation as well. So, Excellent. And we have our visitors that just naturally come yeah, to see us. Yeah. And a lot of times we have a hockey team on Wednesdays and Fridays that come and help us with our landscaping as well. A hockey team. A hockey team. An yeah. ice it hockey? It is a hockey team. Yeah. Right? yeah. Kids hockey. Like yeah. A kids. Sabres. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're young men learning through brawn. <laughs> <laughs> and they're learning about nature. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we also have a rental tonight. So that's another thing we do. Rent the facility uh, out for... Uh, for a special event. Happy hours, yeah. parties, birthday parties, things like that. So. Weddings. I did not know that part. Oh, well, that's excellent. So needless to say, it's an active discovery center, very active. When I got there 11 years ago, that was one of the items that the board was interested in, is having a place, a community hub that people could come and enjoy and find relevant. I decided that back then it was the best way for it to sustain itself. If people valued something, then they'd want to participate in its growth and yeah. that has come to fruition yeah yeah as well as a lot of the additions and the liveliness and the exhibits we add are through community partnerships so mm -hmm. church groups that come and build succulent walls and um different ways that we can figure out how to keep costs down and bring eagle exhibits. scouts <laughs> eagle scouts yeah. um, that's tremendous. So you just mentioned the word, you know, participation and engagement. So for those who maybe are learning about your foundation and your Discovery Center for the first time, why don't you talk about membership and, and what opportunities there are there? We are so happy with our membership. Okay, what's the number? Let's give November 30th number. That was a very impressive one. 663 active members. 663. All and right. Calendar flips over, and we generally have a little bit of attrition, and then we scud you back up. Nice. Our our next goal to hit is seven hundred, and we have a very active board of directors that are engaged in making that come to reality. So membership makes it happen. That's our mantra, mm -hmm. and we fully embody that from individual giving to all the way up to corporate level and down to the kids club level we have something that fits everybody nice. and we try to build in benefits along with letting them know the value of their membership is that school programming that they're funding they are literally teaching the future lagoon stewards through membership nice so tell what a couple of the benefits are for somebody who might not have considered membership yet we're going to sell some memberships right now on this podcast come on <laughs> i love it uh, i'm going to start with the individual or the personal right we've got quite a few different levels but the biggest draw is that you can enter the discovery center and complimentary so if you're mm -hmm. members you come on in, we uh, roll out the red carpet, we ring a bell, we all come and thank them nice. for being members, and it's pretty fun. It is fun. Uh, and then we do discounts on events. Um, we've had longstanding partnerships with the Hub Seabass Hatchery, which is private, so if you're a member, um, we offer tours, hopefully post-COVID, if everything 
goes as planned <laughs> again. Um, we do a great mingle with members of wine and charcuterie and games and education and all things Agua. And then more on the business and corporate side, uh, we do advertisements in our newsletter, which is quarterly, in our e-blasts, um, and then different event perks of tickets and um, VIP seating and things like that. And we're always changing and growing and adding new levels to suit people's needs. We have monthly giving opportunities. So some people don't want to be writing a check once a year. Sure. They'd rather yeah. do incremental giving throughout. Yeah, yeah. So we have our 30-year member effort, and that is $15 uh, a month is the silver level, $30 a month, which is what I participate in, is the gold level, and then $30 a quarter is the bronze level. And our nice. chairperson, Rachel Aganovich, wanted to... Uh, throw the next challenge out. It's the eighty-three thirty-three a month, and that is either going to be platinum or diamond. Which do you think we can maybe decide right now? And that would go be platinum. the go platinum. <laughs> oh, that would awesome. be our, our largest monthly giving yeah. effort, which yields a thousand dollars annually to the yeah. foundation. Oh, that's wonderful. So. Um, you know, we're here sharing and chatting via this podcast, but you guys have your own podcast as well. Tell everybody about that and, and what kind of info they could glean by tuning into your episodes. We do. Nature All Around Me. If you go to natureallaroundme.org, you'll get uh, all the info that you need. We had started and typically do an interview with impactful people on our lagoon, so Hub Sea Bass Hatchery, California Water Sports. Uh, we just finished one up with Joe Cooper from Undersea, who is an ROV underwater specialist and helped us with our Explore the Coast summer camp. So mm -hmm. we had kids, right. you know, driving a remote control ROV under the lagoon, learning about the flora and fauna. So uh, it's a lot of different connections on the lagoon, as well as our board members and the entities Um on the lagoon so that everyone could learn a little bit about nature all around the lagoon. And it really was made a special for Samantha. She is dynamic when it comes to interacting with people in video mm -hmm. and Sanders Tech Ed thought that this was a great way to showcase this fabulous human that sits next to me that yeah. I'm so happy that I got to run into eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as our podcast extraordinaire, John Beethan says, audio is on the up and up. <laughs> audio is on the up and up. Well, uh, we're sitting here talking over audio, so I hope he's correct. Uh, <laughs> <I think so. laughs> um, anything else? I have a couple of personal tidbits to just ask you about, but I don't want to miss anything that has to do with the Lagoon or upcoming events or anything you want to share. Well, the save the date for Mingle with Members is out. It's January 28th. Mingle with members, January 28th. and it's so a happy hour on Friday. Okay. For for members of your Discovery Center or yes. Yes. of your so foundation. If you, know a, if you know a member and you would like to be a guest of that member, like John Beethan could have a guest come for $5. Gotcha. If you join that night, comes right off the top. Look at <laughs> us. We're bargain hunters. That's it. <laughs> no, that's great. So that's coming up. You said January 28th. January 28th. Okay. And then that follows up with, we have Tip Top Run, named after yep. Tip, Top Tip Top Meats. That's in March. March 12th. March 12th. And that's a... 5K, 5K? 10K fun run. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not chipped, up. just fun. Yeah. yeah. Just it? fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a lot of food at the end of yes. that, just fun. Okay, so I have to ask, though, because I've organized 5Ks and 10Ks, is it is it on the trails around the lagoon? We're we're on and off trails. On and off trails. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, partial partial yes. trail. Yeah. And then we talked about Laguna Kahuna. That's scheduled for May six. We have a new event this year. One of our board members, Thomas Stewart, is putting together a poker tournament, yeah. and that's coming April twenty eighth, I believe. Wow, I'm like nailing these dates. Nailing the dates. I'm loving it. And of course, the Agua family. AKA the Adams family. <laughs> Discovery uh, Gala <laughs> is August 27th. So your gala will be August 27th, and it's Adams family theme, is what I just picked up there. Is that what? Dun -dun 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 -dun. 
Dun, I love it. No, <laughs> absolutely love it. Your guys' galas are definitely engaging and fun. Lisa, you've had some interesting stuff this last summer. You were in Greece for a, a, a wedding of one of your, your son, I think, right? Yes, my youngest got married to a beautiful girl in Corfu, Greece. Yes, wow. it wow. was beautiful. Yeah. It's stunning. It was fairy tale. I had nothing to do with it, yeah. but it was beautiful, I have to say. Mother of the groom is a lot less involved than the mother of the bride. Is that what you're saying? And, well, and it being international, that was probably made it even less hands-on being so far away. But how was it with, uh, you know, COVID stuff? Everything was okay? It was a challenge to get there mm-hmm. and a challenge to get home. But besides that, it was easy breezy. Uh, the challenge is getting there is somebody had their paperwork wrong. Oh. And so I, I had to say goodbye to a friend midstream. Oh. They got to get back on the ship, so to speak, the next day. But uh, it was very hard to yeah. re- leave leave a soldier behind. So yeah, yeah. Right. And then on the way back, I don't know, have you all had those home tests for COVID Mm -hmm. and you have to prove negative? Mm -hmm. Apparently, if there's a group of you, there's going to be a false positive. That happened to be me. Oh, God. So I had to go in a foreign country, in a foreign cab, to a foreign clinic Mm -hmm. (laughs) that I didn't speak the language to get my negative test. Mm -hmm. I did, and I got home. But those stresses were challenging. Both of those that you mentioned are obviously things that... Pre-2020 wouldn't have even, you know, been on the horizon. So, yeah. Well, and Samantha, it looks like you had a fun trip to Hawaii not too long ago, (laughs) trolling your Facebook page a little. Uh, (laughs) What was the occasion? Uh, I turned 30. No. So I am now 30. Um, (laughs) And I went with a group of friends to Kauai, um, and we had a great time. Saw a lot of turtles, great weather, very relaxed. It's Probably the one place I really don't look at my phone, don't nice. watch TV. Yeah. It's just at the beach. Yeah. So we miss her terribly and we're so happy when she gets to go and do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, you're still young enough to be part of our 40 under 40 at the chain, which <laughs> okay. you were honored with this year. So you got a ways to go. Um, but that's great. Well, thank you, ladies, so much for coming in and, and sharing, taking the time to, you know, share about all the amazing things that go on at the Lagoon and at your center. We really appreciate all that you guys do for for our community and for the Lagoon. Thank you. And should I be thanking Brad or Mr. Vista? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, when I got this job, I mean, Lisa, you and I knew each other before I yes. came to Carlsbad. and. Uh, because I had been at the Vista Chamber for a number of years. And when I got this job right about three years ago, right now, that was the number one question I got was, what are you going to do with your license plate? And I'm like, really? <laughs> that's that's as far as you can think. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so my, my license plate has been retired, but um, my wife put it in a nice shadow box for me and I took a picture on my phone, but it's it's... That's in the his, in the past now. <laughs> Onward and upward. Well, and we're lucky it. to have you here. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, on that note, again, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on our Carlsbad People, Purpose, and Impact podcast today. If you enjoyed it, please hit the follow button on wherever you get your audio. And please tell a friend. We would love to hear your feedback, which you can share at carlsbadpodcast.com. You can leave us a review ask a question, or leave an audio comment, which we can play on the show in the future. And that's all we have for today. Can't wait to see you next time on Carlsbad, People, Purpose, and Impact. And remember, share some kindness today. It's free, creates goodwill, and makes you feel great.